Hi everyone, my name is Akshay and you're watching Tech Binders. So today I'm not back with another unboxing video. I'm here for something else. So I'm here to share my knowledge what I gained in last few years about quadcopters. So here I'm going to teach you how to make a quadcopter and how to fly it. So it will be a series of videos which will tell you different parts and components about quadcopter and how you can fly it. Now the question comes for whom this video is. So these video series are for people those who are interested in quadcopter, those who are beginners and I'm going to teach you everything from the basic level so you need not to worry about and for the moderate people. Those who know something about quadcopter but they are dreaming of to fly a quadcopter so these videos are for those people and even though it can help the pro people also in some way or other. So without further delay, let's dive in this video. So before starting, I want to tell you that this is not a single video, there will be a series of video to cover the quadcopter. Basically it cannot be covered in a single video, all the parts and components, I will explain in detail and I will tell you how to assemble it and how to fly it. Everything will be there in this series video. So here comes the basic introduction part that is part 1. So what are the quadcopters? Quadcopter is something which has 4 propellers. A propeller is something which is numbers like this and these are mounted on the motors which makes the quadcopter fly. So there are 4 identical motors that are of same rating which I am going to explain in next video what are these motors comprised of. So this is a quadcopter. There are various models of quadcopter available. As you can see here it's an X model of quadcopter. It can be plus model also. It can be an H model also as you can see on your screen. It's an H model also. There are other flying machines which can be made. They can be hexacopter and even octacopter has been achieved. So for whom these are hexacopters and octacopter? So if you are a film making designer or you want to take a lot of payloads, then you need more propellers and more battery juice to run that. So a quadcopter basically it can carry your camera and it can give you a live stream of it. Apart from that, if you want to carry a DSLR or a high weight camera, then you need to have a hexacopter or even an octacopter. With increasing the number of propellers and increasing the number of motors, you need to increase the battery capacity also and it's gonna be heavy too. But it's gonna be more stable and it's gonna be more precise than these quadcopters. If you have already purchased the bundle from the Amazon, that is all the parts and components, I'm gonna teach you and if you not, then please like this video and subscribe my channel and also comment it that so that I can provide my own bundle. The benefit of my bundle is that it's gonna fly and all the components on the parts will be tested by myself and then it come to you. So everything will be tested and I will make sure that everything gonna work. So if you've already purchased no problem but if you have not purchased then please drop it so that I can add my product on Amazon if you want me to do that. So here I'm gonna discuss about chases that is the frame of the body which is the main part of the quadcopter which handles. So there are various chases available in the market. This is the basic one. This model is very popular and this is known as FJ45 model is there. And if you are a basic, I would highly recommend you to go for this model only. But there are advanced models also which will be quite useful if you want to take your this hobby to more advanced level. So here are some of the frames. As you can see here, these are more advanced level frames. The quadcopter versatility varies upon the purpose of which you are using. So if you want to fly a quadcopter or if you want a recording, you need these type of quadcopters. For racing quadcopters, you need a small quadcopter with everything inbuilt in so that it can fly at very high speed and it can go up to 60 to 80 kilometers per hour. That is quite high and it cannot be quite visible from naked eye. So it depends upon the choice for which you want to make the quadcopter. Well, if you want for any other than flying, then I can surely help you, but not in this video. Just comment it and I will help you in this making. Also, if you want to make a more advanced quadcopter, which I already made using Pixel Flight Controller Boot. If you need any tech assistant regarding the quadcopter, then also make it sure that you subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I upload videos. So before jumping into the next video, let me explain you different components that you require for a quadcopter and in the next couple of videos I am going to explain the functionality of each component and how to interface with your quadcopter to make it a perfect one. Quadcopter 
motor basically you required a frame which I have discussed apart from frame you need a motor this is called a motor this is also known as BLDC what it stand for a brushless DC motor which I am going to explain in details how you need to select these motors and for controlling the motor you require something like this this is known as ESC an electronic speed controller so you need an ESC to control your motor speed and this is going to be useful it comes in various ranges uh, it can be 25, 30, 45 and even higher amps rating so how you can choose these ESCs that is also I am going to cover in the next videos apart from ESC you require something like this is known as propeller the propeller comes in different shapes and sizes and different orientation also to power up all these things you required a battery so this is a lithium polymer battery also known as lipo battery so it also comes in various shapes and sizes and different battery capacities which also I'm going to explain you so which battery is best for you and what is the size of the battery that you require no need to worry about it and apart from that you require a um, transmitter and receiver so this is a transmitter and if you have used some RC car you will be familiar with transmitters like this but it's a quite advanced one when you consider with RC car because it has a more control and it has more range than the RC and here's the receiver so these are gonna pair up and work it and I will explain this also how it's gonna work so you require this this is the basic FSCT 6 speed transmitter and receiver and it's very popular mm -hmm. in flying port cocktail there are some advanced also available so if you are a beginner I will recommend you to stick with this basic one and I will cover up also how you wanna configure it and how you wanna interface with this and with the port cocktail so everything will be covered you need not worry about it so here comes the main component of the quad factor and this is known as flight controller board also known as FCV so here it is flight controller board it is KK 2.1.5 it's a very basic board and it's very good for beginners I will recommend you to have this flight controller because I'm gonna cover up about this flight controller only uh, why I chose this flight controller because it is an inbuilt screen so you need not to connect your flight controller to the computer and configure it accordingly so it gives you more freedom to fine tune your tunings with this board only so you need not require any extra device to connect it and it's a hassle free also so I'm gonna cover up this board so I will recommend you to purchase this and if you want for me to upload the link just comment it and I can upload the links for this part so these are the various parts which you require to make a quadcopter and also you require some additional things also that is you require a connector to connect with your quadcopter this is known as XT60 connector and I will provide the link for these also and if you want to you can get the accessories like a battery checker which can check the battery capacity or you can use traditionally a multimeter to check the battery capacity it's an additional one it's not a recommended one so this is all for today in this video and we are gonna cover up the course in the next video so thank you for watching have a nice day and if you are not subscribed and like my channel then please do it and make sure you hit the bell icon so that you can receive the videos which I make later on. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. This is Akshay signing off.